Wait, what is that? See it? Tattooing is an unrecognized art form that has existed since well into the beginning of humanity. It is our outlet of personal passion through suffering, where in the end we feel vindicated and whole. Tattooing has persevered through decades of stigmas, prohibitions, and black-eyed reputations, not just in Western cultures, but in all cultures. However, in most recent years, tattooing has surged in popularity. Eventually, the stereotypes of people with tattoos will fade along with all the other forms of racism and segregation. Well, maybe humanity will have to work a little harder, but that's the goal, right? I have always had an interest in tattooing, and when I got my first one in high school, it started the fever. Tattoo fever is a real addiction, but without the doctors and medicines. After a few weeks, you start craving the sound of tuhibiki and then you begin plotting your next tattoo. Tattoo artists and clients build a relationship of trust, the trust of me commissioning them to create art on my skin, matched with the artist's confidence in the professionalism of their work. This has existed since the beginning, and within all cultures. The traditional Japanese horishi may spend weeks getting to know a client before deciding whether or not the client will be tattooed. Horishis are careful of who they tattoo, and will turn clients away if the relationship is not positive. Something more Western clients should think about when choosing an artist. It's not just about how great of an artist they are. The style that I am drawn to most is Japanese, and I have always wanted to get a single arm design, which in the West we would think of as a serious tattoo. But the horishi would call this a single arm omission, and would not be taken seriously at all. The horishi says, go big or go home. So I started with a forearm piece, and apparently I am working backwards. I was told that most people start at the top and work downwards, but I wanted this design on my forearm, so on with the show. I found a painting on the internet, and it was exactly what I was looking for. There was a lot of symbolism in this piece, first being that I have always felt connected to the samurai, especially their code of honor and inner self. Second, the fact that the samurai is fighting a snake represents me fighting myself, because I was born in the year of the snake, and I have always had an inner conflict conflict with snakes. It's my attempt to win an inner battle. And finally, I wanted to get this tattooed on my forearm because it was me extending myself to others, either with acceptance or suspicion. So I knew what I wanted and why, but I still needed an incredible artist to pull off this intricate piece. I checked out a lot of different places and surprisingly got differing answers, which I couldn't understand. With a surging popularity, wasn't there a common practice established and used by tattooists across the board? One that was regulated and oversaw by government officials? Some kind of protective measures to regulate the constant flow of clients and use of needles that have had contact with blood? Most artists are scheduled weeks and months in advance, and unlike the horishi, some are tattooing indiscriminately and carelessly. So wouldn't the government want to protect the public from the potential of a serious outbreak of blood-borne diseases, such as Hep C? I needed art, and I needed answers, so this is where the quest begins. Sideshow Tattoos and Piercing in Georgetown, Ontario. Really love what you're going to get, not like, oh, I'm going to get it because everybody else is getting one. Welcome to Sideshow Tattoos and Piercings, and we're going to take a look around the shop. My Harishi is Rachel Tellis. 
Our first meeting was a two hour conversation and by the end of it, I knew that there was a bond forming and I had found my artist. Rachel has been tattooing for most of her life and has apprenticed in the United States under many prominent artists. She has learnt the American system, which is strictly enforced as well as heavily focused on studying bloodborne pathogens. HIV and hepatitis C are safety concerns that have plagued the credibility of the tattoo industry. So how do you get HIV or hepatitis C from a tattoo? It's not even necessarily from a tattoo. You can catch hepatitis um, mainly in restaurants, in bathrooms. People not washing their hands through different like body fluids. If you have cut your finger and you touch a surface, it lives on a surface for 30 days. It will not die. That's why we use biotax, which completely kills everything on a surface like immediately. So you, you, know, you can't contract that stuff because we're making sure that the surfaces and everything that we're using is completely thrown away and completely sprayed down to kill everything on a surface between every single client and used all through the shop on door handles, on our counters, on coffee tables, even, you know, you can catch it anywhere. But mainly bathrooms is like a really bad place, like through feces and urine and, you know, just... And then people not washing their hands and then touching the door handle to walk out of the bathroom always try and like use a paper towel to like turn it off like on a bathroom door because a lot of people like good 90 percent of people do not wash their hands this is the bathroom this is one customer bathroom right here where we have our, our sterilizer and antibacterial soap um, we have our hand washing signs up to make sure everybody's washing their hands properly a lot of people don't know there's actually a specific way to like wash your hands well being a tattoo artist different from other people but you want to start from like your wrists down and kind of like wash your hands down in between your fingers, tops and bottoms. Because there's bacteria and stuff that can actually build around your cuticles and your hands and your crevices. A lot of people don't know that. Hepatitis C is just one form of hepatitis. Hepatitis now runs A through K. So um, hepatitis A and B are treatable. And hepatitis C through K, you die from it. Unless you're going to the doctor for blood work and testing, you might not know that you have it for years. And then all of a sudden one day you become very, very ill and you go to the doctor and you're not knowing what's going on. So they test you and they say, hey, you have hepatitis. And by that point, it's usually too bad. When you show like major symptoms of hepatitis, it's usually like you have two weeks to live. So there's pretty much no cure for it, even if they find out at the early stages. It's not hepatitis that kills you. It's the failure of your liver and other organs and stuff in your body that kills you. Yes, you must wash your hands properly. Rachel is clearly meticulous about sterilization, which is an indication of her professionalism. So just how do standards differ between Canada and the U.S.? In the United States, everything is licensed through the state. You have to have a bloodborne pathogen certificate to be able to tattoo, which means you are completely trained in sterilization and cleanliness and making sure that you know like, how to prevent disease spread, how to protect yourself, how to protect, protect the client, how to protect the public, making sure that you know how to do things properly if you're going to own a shop or you're going to tattoo in this industry at a shop. Up here in Canada, there's nothing far as that. Um, there's no programs. You don't have to have a tattoo license. Um, Portland, Oregon, if you look at the guidelines for Portland, Oregon, they're extremely strict. They actually, you have to go to school for tattooing and it's basically a big sterilization. It's basically like a giant nursing course. You can't actually learn to tattoo from there. That you have to learn from somebody who is actually a professional who's been in the industry for a long time. As far as sterilization, there's nothing up here that they make anyone do. Somebody could buy a crappy piece of machinery from eBay and start tattooing from their apartment. There's no guidelines like for them to stop people. I mean, the health department can find out that you're tattooing, come in, and basically fine you, I guess, for um, you know, raw registering with them. There's like a ton of people tattooing out of apartments and houses that the health board doesn't know about. Here, which I like to go through with new clients, this is about our bio room and our sterilization room so they don't have to like turn around and ask us questions or see all our papers and we keep our updated third party lab testing which we do once a month on the wall for them and they can look back and see like all the other ones from previously to make sure we're up to date, says the sterilizers were working and functioning correctly. The health board only requires that we only have to do this. But um, we also go above and beyond by using chemical integrators, which we keep up here and explain to customers and stuff like that so they can have a full understanding 
which I'll be showing you um, what an integrator is and what it does. The paper's up here about spore test kit, informational guide for them so they know what a spore test is and why we do it. We also use chemicals, biomers and biotex. On any tubes and that, that we scrub, we actually submerge them all into the biomers first before we even sterilize them. So it's killing everything on the tubes and that before it even gets sterilized. And then the Biotex, which is another chemical that we use on all our services in between every customer. A complete information guide for the customer so they know exactly that we are completely sterile and that they're not going to catch anything on the shop. The health department only really requires that we do spore testing once a month as far as like cleaning stuff. I've researched like the best chemicals that I feel are the best chemicals out the market that are going to work the best. The integrators are not something that you have to use. I use that because um, I know without a doubt that somebody, that my sterilizer is working and somebody's not going to contract something, as well as the biomers is not something that they say that you have to use. The biomers and the integrators are just something that I like to use above and beyond. The requirements is just basically a third party lab test once a month. But my problem with that is, is if a sterilizer were to go down or something were to happen to it, which this world is not perfect and things like that can happen, how would you know? Your steamer could be working, but it might not reach the proper temperature that it's supposed to be reaching. And how would you know that? You wouldn't know that unless you're using integrators every single time. And that's why I can sleep at nighttime knowing that people are safe. I use the same equipment on myself as well as my husband. I know that if I'm not going to use it on myself, I'm definitely not going to use it on someone else. I know that before choosing a tattoo shop, you should check it out to make sure that it's clean and that the artist is always using a new needle. But when I go there, it looks clean and the artist is currently tattooing someone. So do I make a judgment call that this place is safe? Make sure when you walk into a shop that you're checking for the proper paperwork, that they are doing proper um, sterilization, as far as spore testing, see if they're using integrators, just make sure that their sterilizer is working properly, make sure they're up to date on all their paperwork, absolutely make sure that they're you know carrying all the proper cleaning supplies that they're supposed to be cleaning, make sure that the needles, razors, everything that they're using is completely brand new that they're hooked up with a bioway system, you need to be seeing these things, you know, make sure that they're not throwing them just in the garbage and, you know, make sure that they're covering everything, just anything that you would, you know, that they're not using their hands for a tattoo, like, you know, things that, you know, sterilization. Our sterilization room, I put up a paper on the wall here, guidelines for infection control. Um, this is our hand washing sink. Um, which is completely separate from anything else. This is only for hand washing. We wouldn't do tubes or anything in the sink. It's just strictly for hand washing. Over here is our bio area, which basically we put a plexiglass in here so when you're scrubbing tubes, nothing is going to splash into your face, um, into any mucous membranes, which is very important because you can contract tuberculosis, hepatitis, you know, AIDS, like there's so many different diseases that I could go through and you can contract and you don't want to subject yourself to any of that. So we use that and gloves are completely used and scrubbing tubes and making sure that's all done. We use an ultrasonic, which is where we put the uh, biomers into. This is the sterile counter over here, which is like everything must be sterile. That goes on this counter, like all our tubes and our sterilizer over there and we put our tubes into a drying drawer so after a tube is completely sterile, we put them into the drying drawer. The integrators, which I was talking about, you get your test back, which is, this is the, um, the real one, like that's a copy up on the wall that I do, but they actually give you, you have to do, it's a three-part test when you give it to a third-party lab and they actually do a steam test as well as they actually test um, a little strip inside which tells you if it's positive or negative for like the virus. They give like a, a little virus test kind of deal. And we do our integrators every single time that we are doing a load in there, which is every single time. Every time that we do tubes, clamps, anything like that, we never ever do needles. Needles are completely sent away by a bio waste company. They, in between like every single customer so you would not be using it ever. So the integrators go inside with, with whatever's going in there like your clamps or your tubes and they tell you exactly that it's reached a proper temperature because they would not go up and it will tell you if it's rejected or accepted and these are obviously all completely off the chart of accept so 
I know that it's being done properly. Some believe to bear a tattoo is a lifetime test of endurance. Today, people of all demographics are getting tattoos, but there's still a sense of caution and concern for safety. So what do we need to bring credibility to Canada's tattoo industry? We need more people involved, is what we need. We need more people that say that we want professional tattoo artists, not house scratchers. They shouldn't allow people tattooing out of their houses and apartments. It shouldn't be allowed. You have to register and get a tattoo license to be able to tattoo, which means it entailed into getting that tattoo license, you must have a bloodborne cert pathogen certificate. You must have to take a course saying that you are registered, like you're certified to be able to uh, tattoo, knowing the proper way to sterilize and all the rest of it. And then you can apply for a tattoo certificate stating that you know, you're a tattoo artist and you're allowed to actually work in the industry professionally. But I don't know. I've talked to the health board about that, and uh, I don't think that's coming anytime soon. They told me to call my MPP. Rachel is an incredible artist. She's doing an amazing job on my arm, and already I see a piece of art that I can be proud of. Tattooing should be taken seriously and should not be rushed. Good tattoos take time, but in the end you see the results of your patience. Safety is always a priority, if not for you, but for everyone else that you may come in contact with through the shop. Rachel is going to continue her work on my forearm, and now I have a new quest. I want to raise these concerns with public officials, because I should be able to be tattooed in Toronto one day, and then in Calgary the next, without worrying about different safety standards. We need a regulated tattoo industry that is both recognized and enforced by every province and territory. Safe tattooing is just as important for those who don't have tattoos and will never get any, because an outbreak of bloodborne diseases will affect us all.